Hi everybody, welcome back to the Nanawa Live YouTube channel and as promised today we're going to be talking about So the Winter to My Skin. So So the Winter to My Skin is a period piece set in the 50s, written and directed by Jamil X.T. Kubega. It's inspired by a true story actually and it's about this black rebel hero, it's sort of like a, a Robin Hood type of figure in the Eastern Cape by the name of John Gebe and he's played in this film by Ezra Mabengeza. The film also boasts a cast of Zolisa Kaluva, Bongile Man. I, Brendan Goli, Peter Kurth, and even Robert Whitehead. Before we get into the review itself, obviously, please, if you are new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button. Also, click on the notification bell so that you're notified every time I release a new video. If you're a returning subscriber, you know what to do. Please like this video and share it with as many people as you can possibly share it with. And yeah, that's basically about it. So let's get into it. So I watched So the Winter to My Skin. I won. It was 2019, top of 2019, around Feb, right? The film of came out in 2018 but it was still in festivals specifically the Toronto International Film Festival and it was also believe it or not shortlisted as best foreign film for the 91st Academy Award of that year but it wasn't nominated unfortunately yeah I watched this film twice actually I think within a space of like a week or a month I watched it at a screening and then I watched it again when it came out in cinemas and that's exactly what I want to get into just because I was I was drawn to just how I hadn't seen anything like it prior to it actually actually at the time at least so it's a very stylistic film so that's the first thing i want to say it's written and directed by jamil x and what i love about him and you, i mentioned him in the, in the in the previous review is he's almost sort of mastered what it is that he does and he's sort of flexing his range this is a second feature film by the way and when i watch this film it, it has minimal dialogue like minimal dialogue to a point where i i, I feel safe calling it a silent film it's almost like 90 percent silent or 85 percent silent the only like dialogue you'll hear or vocals or, or actual words being spoken you probably hear is like background um background um, um dialogue from like um other cast members within you know within the actual scene or shot but usually the main characters hardly ever speak it's a very visual film it's a very visually stylistic film even how it's shot and you can tell that this for me and this is almost like the case with every film that Jamil X. Kubega does is you can tell that he's 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 boasting a certain because he, he has a lot of skills in his arsenal and in this case he was boasting his visual style just like I can do a whole movie without really saying much in terms of words but you you'll you'll be engaged or you'll be drawn to it to a certain extent you will love it you'll enjoy it and you'll be very much gripped by the story it follows this robin hood like figure who did a lot that he could during around the times of evacuation by the way in uh, apartheid south africa did as much as he could to just stand up for his people and this includes stealing from the white people at the time this includes doing anything you can possibly think of to take care of himself his community and his family the role is played brilliantly Brilliantly by Ezra Mabengeza, who for me, I think I'd seen him before somewhere, I just can't remember where, but it was actually the first time I'd watched something that long with him in it. And he he, he plays it spectacularly. There's also Zolisa Kalovo, who sort of plays like sort of an antagonist role in this film, and he was just chilling this film itself is chilling what i didn't kind of like about this film is that by the mere nature that it's very heavy on the visuals there's not a lot of talking there's not a lot of explaining there's nothing because of that ultimately in a way it, it sort of becomes a very self-indulgent film speaking of that speaking by just how visually heavy it is and how there's not much dialogue like i said nothing not much is explained you're able to follow in general the thread of what's happening within the film but it's kind of a bit difficult to 
fully grasp okay like okay what really is happening not what's happening as in it's confusing it's not too clear especially in terms of the protagonist like okay what's this guy's goal from from get-go because usually you want to figure out what what's troubling this person from the beginning so that you kind of go with them on the journey to achieve their goal and by the end you're like oh yeah they did it or they didn't and in this goal it's a bit difficult if you don't already know the history of what inspired the film to begin with so it's kind of a bit difficult to follow because like i said not much is explained so keep that in mind that it, when you do watch this film you may not really care for it that much but i'm sure there's certain people who especially with the background of the hi background of the history is that even a real thing some people actually appreciate it more because like i said not much is dictated in this film which is part of the reason why i even watched it twice i watched it because i, I enjoyed it the first time and i was blown away but also because i was like okay now that i've watched the whole thing kind of want to watch it again to sort of like understand like what's really happening what are the goals what are the obstacles and and, and etc but yeah so that could kind of like be something that a lot of people are not really um a fan of another thing i could sort of say i didn't quite like about this film was i could say now pacing right because when you look at the runtime of the film it feels very long like you watch this film and you're like i've been watching this film like i have been watching this film you can kind of feel like okay i'm enjoying it no problem but like i i feel like i've been watching this one for a very long time and i think it's because of the lack of dialogue also maybe the pacing here and there that makes it feel so long that i checked the runtime for knuckle city which feels like a breeze to watch and i realized that the runtime of knuckle city is like i think two hours four minutes the runtime of this film is like less than two hours actually like i think 118 minutes or so so it's it's not even two it doesn't even clock two hours but it feels way longer than two hours and it feels way longer than knuckle city which is longer than it right you get the point apart from that though i really did enjoy this film i enjoyed the score in this film jamil exikwega what i've noticed about him he infuses a lot of music in his films this is just not for in terms of the score but a lot of south african music a lot of music from a time that you can tell that this is he grew up around this time more specifically jazz you can hear a lot of jazz in this film and also in, in his other films one that i'm here to review but he he uses sound he uses sound design he uses uses um, um, just music the scoring and even yeah, original soundtracks for, for the actual film in this case Knuckle City he uses that to sort of enhance whatever is happening in this film and you can tell that this guy has been doing this for a very long time just by how clean it looks it looks the film looks so visually clean I usually say in these reviews the film was shot well the film was visually pleasing or visually attractive and I usually distinguish that I don't mean that the cinematography was great for once in this film this cinematography was amazing the cinematography was great because for me just because something looks nice doesn't mean that's that's not necessarily cinematography the cinematography should not be devoid of story and literally the entire point of this film just even by design it is created in such a way that you are told a story through the camera only no words nothing just camera and sound and music and by that the fact that he made he, he was successful at pulling that off within a feature-length film means the cinematography by default Fault. apart from it being visually pleasing it also was able to tell a story to which that's what cinematography is visuals plus story gives you cinematography something can look nice and it can be saying absolutely nothing and that, that's not the case with this film but yeah the show the film is showing on um, showmax it's been streaming for i don't know how long actually so you can go check it out there if you're interested in it yeah and that's basically about it if you've seen the film before please let me know how you feel about it comment down in the comment section hit me up be classy not crassy just let me know how you feel if you haven't checked out the film it's available on show max you can check it out at any time and come back and comment down in the in the comment section don't forget to subscribe comment like and share and yeah that's basically about it guys and yeah i'll see you in the next video Sister walking back a kaya from Ishiba, gang of leeches by Sekasi Smotikas.